All right. Hey everyone, I'm going to go over the science lessons. Um, I'm going to do these one at a time, otherwise this video would be super long. So I'll do each exploration separately. So here we are, we're starting in Unit 4, Lesson 3, Interactions of, in Earth's Systems Cause Weather. This whole lesson is about how essentially weather is formed, storms and stuff. So first, down here it says, what would cause a storm like this to happen suddenly and it describes a town you know where it's a uh, warm and or it's it's calm and cloudy and then it's dark with heavy storms and it's snowy so what could cause the weather to change suddenly like this so I said changing weather patterns like the wind might affect temperatures and change the weather in a town quickly sorry I messed that up but I can't fix that anymore um, and then draw, make a drawing to illustrate it. So here I have like the mountains and the towns on one side and there's warm air and then I have colder air and you know the colder air is more dense, right? It's higher, um, so it's moving towards the warmer air, higher pressure, cold air. Down, 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 down. Okay, and so describing weather. So this first question says, what is the weather like right now? So depending on when you do this, you know, your answers are going to be totally different. <laughs> um, so I said it's windy and a little cold, and my favorite weather is when it's rainy, and my least favorite is when it's hot and sunny. And then there's this part talking about temperature. This is a really vital part to understanding everything. So um, I highlighted down here that warm air is less dense than cold air or than cool air. And the reason is because, you know, um, remember that temperature is how hot or cold something is, right? And so if you took the same amount of air that's cold air and the same amount of air that's warm air, right? Remember that warm air is moving around uh, faster. So because it's moving around faster, it's going to tend to spread out more. It's going to be colliding. The little particles are going to be colliding more often. They're going to spread out from each other more. So if you could like take a little cube of air, in cold air, you'd have more particles than in uh, the same cube of warm or hot air. Cold, that means the cold air is more dense. It has more uh, matter in the same amount of space. Another important thing is humidity. That's kind of throughout the rest of these explorations. Humidity is how much water is actually in the air. And humidity is always uh, um, given in um, percents usually. So if you looked up uh, relative humidity on, um, on like a weather app, it would tell you, you know, it's 40% or whatever. The important thing to remember about relative hu humidity is it's not actually doesn't actually mean the same amount of water is actually in the air or water vapors in the air so our relative if you had 50 percent relative humidity and it's cold that's actually a different amount of water that's in the air than 50 percent humidity if it's really warm and we'll talk about that a little bit later and that's but that's why it's called relative humidity um so down here it talks about clouds and precipitation and essentially this is saying well how do clouds form and when does stuff like rain and things like what when does that happen and that happens when it says it in this first kind of after this first sentence what happens when relative humidity exceeds 100 percent at this point more water vapor condenses than evaporates so what this is talking about up here is so when you have air um, it can hold a certain amount of water vapor. Now, if humidity is less than 100%, then evaporating is happening faster than condensing. So the air is going to evaporate faster than it can like be pulled together by gravity and condense into back into a liquid. But once you get to 100% and more, then it starts condensing more, and that's what causes clouds and rain and stuff like that. So this chart talks about relative humidity um, and this is the reason why it's called relative humidity is because actually the amount of water that is in um, the air changes 
depending on the temperature. So this chart is saying what 100% uh, humidity, relative humidity, actually means. So this red line represents 100% humidity. So you can see how way down here, right, when the air is, you know, like, let's say, negative 20 degrees Celsius to negative 10 degrees no. Celsius. Just swat it away, sweetie. Sorry, my daughter's sitting next to me. Um, when you have really cold temperatures down here, right, the 100% humidity means that there is this much water vapor in the air. What's the matter? It's just a fly, sweetie. Just water away. We're sitting outside. Um, the but as as the air gets warmer, right? As the air starts getting increasing. So when we're zero degrees, this is like Celsius. Zero degrees is like thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit. Forty degrees Celsius is about a hundred degrees. So you can see here at 100 degrees, right? If it's 100 degrees outside, you can have 50 grams of water per kilogram of air. You can have five times as much water as down here when it's just 10 degrees. So the warmer the air is, the more actual water can be in the air and the more water you'd have to have in the air in order for it to be 100% humidity. So over here, as temperature increases, it takes uh, more water to reach 100% relative humidity at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, so at 25 degrees Celsius, that'd be right here with 10 grams of water vapor. So you'd be right here. Well, this is this is like halfway down here. We'd only be at like 50% humidity, right? Because it's about halfway to 100%. So it's not likely to be raining because 100 and more would be raining. And then if uh, at if 10 grams per kilogram of water vapor, so that's right here, remained in the air and the temperature dropped to 10 degrees right here, precipitation would be, I would say likely, it looks about 100%, maybe a little bit higher. So the precipitation would be likely. If, it, if you were at 10, uh, grams of water per kilogram of air it, at any of these temperatures right 10 and lower it would probably be raining but once you get above 10 degrees it would probably not be raining and this chart is uh, you know it can seem confusing but if it's more intuitive if you think like it doesn't rain a lot during the summer well why is that it's because during the summer right it's much warmer right it's like we're looking at temperatures up here on average for us during the summer so you need a lot more water you know like you need let's say this is what it is when it's cold around here you need you know two three times as much water in the air for it to rain than we do say during the winter time and this chopped my answer off so this says think about the storms that swept over the town in utah how um, did the clouds and store form record your evidence? Um, but just based off of the, the clouds and snow forming, I would say that they formed because the, uh, because the temperature decreased, right? So we're up here, it was like some temperature and it wasn't very cloudy, a little bit of clouds, but then the temperature started decreasing right but the 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 amount of water in the air was probably the same but as the temperature decreased all of a sudden now we were past the point in terms of humidity where the clouds will form more so the clouds start forming more and then it would eventually start snowing and it snows because instead of raining because it's it's cold enough for it the actual water to freeze and then uh we have air pressure Air pressure, this is a really nice diagram. This is showing, just like with water, right? You know, like you can't, you have to have special submarines to go deep in water because the deeper in water, it, you know, it's increased air pressure. You can feel this when you're in a, even in a pool, you know, you go to the deep end of a pool and you feel the, the pressure greater. It's the same thing with air. So as you are at sea level, which we're pretty close to living here, there's about um, one 
well, it, there, there's a certain amount of air pressure. It just depends on where you're at. But then as you go up, like if you go up a mountain, right, there's way less. If you're on Mount Everest, there's less air. That's what people, when they do things like they climb mount, mountains like Mount Everest, they have supplemental oxygen where they're breathing air. It's not that there's not oxygen up there. There's just way less of it because there's less air to be at all. So um, this talks about if you put a bottle, right, if you drink a water bottle and then you had the empty plastic bottle and you capped it and then you drive back down the mountain, what's going to happen to the bottle? And I said, it's going to contract or it's going to get, it's going to shrink because the air pressure is higher at the bottom of the mountain. And I kind of drew this little picture down here to show that. So at the top of the mountain, right, you have all these air particles and they're all spread out pretty far because there's, the pressure is less. And you can see how, like, so let's say you'd have like, you know, we got, I put five dots in this water bottle, but everything's pretty spread out evenly. Now, as you go down to the bottom of the mountain, there's way more air pressure. And the amount of uh, dots or the amount of air molecules inside the water bottle stays the same. But as you go down, they're going to take up less space. And because you have the cap on the bottle, the cap is, the, the bottle is going to be squished down by the air. The air is going to like push from all sides down to squish the bottle down. So that's an even air pressure on the inside and the outside of the bottle. And then finally wind, we've got uh, high pressure going to low pressure. So this one, you can see how from the dog, you know, the wind is blowing in this direction with this arrow down here to the right. And so that means that the high pressure is on the left and the low pressure is on the right because it goes from the high to the low pressure. And the end of exploration one. Uh, think back to the descriptions you wrote about the current weather, your favorite weather, your least favorite. Um, and I, so I chose rain to describe using these terms. I said, so my favorite weather, rain can occur when wind with a lower temperature, so uh, moves into an area because of the greater pressure. So as the cold air moves into the area, the level of the humidity increases, and eventually the water would be able to precipitate in uh, to form clouds and the rain. Um, so what might have caused this type of weather in your description? So in my example, it was rainy because the level of humidity was greater than 100%. So as the cold air moved in, um, the the relative humidity kind of dropped, and so it was the it was then over 100% humidity. So the water can starts condensing faster than evaporating, so it rains. And that's all for exploration one.